Hey everybody, welcome to another cruise report, cruise update, live, well not live, but from Sun Princess. We are on our third day of crossing the Atlantic, I believe on our way to Fort Lauderdale. The captain announced earlier today that we would be arriving, I think we're arriving a day early. We were going to arrive on the 9th. I think we're getting in the early evening of the 8th. Maybe they have some, some kind of special thing planned. I'm not sure, but so I guess we'll be overnighting on board the ship in Fort Lauderdale. But I have my notes here of things that we've experienced since my last video, and I thought I would just give you a little update and tell you kind of what's been going on. The first thing I want to talk about and, and I apologize, maybe I've covered some of these things in my previous videos and I've just forgotten, but the uh, theater, the Princess Arena, is a theater, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a theater in the round, it's almost a theater in the round, it's probably a 270 degree uh, theater with seating, you know, in a circular fashion around the stage. And it's quite small for a ship this size. We always pay very close attention to what people say when we're on these cruises. And we just hear talk, we just kind of keep our ears open. And I think there's a lot of people we've heard complaining about the size of the theater. Uh, they've had to add matinees on all the production shows. Uh, what they do is they have two shows in an evening for a production show. I think they have one at seven o'clock and one at nine o'clock, I think. And we went one time in the evening and we showed up an hour before and the theater was almost completely full an hour before. So you pretty much have to go an hour before the show to get a seat uh, or to get the seat you want. Um, there is reserve seating for those of us that have the Premier Package. But once that's gone, there are more people with the Premier Package than what they have seats for, obviously. So like five or 10 minutes before the show starts, if there's any seats left in the Premier section, they just release those and let anybody sit there. So I don't recall uh, being on a cruise ship where it was that crowded. I think the theater maybe holds less than a thousand people and there's 4,000 people on the ship. So what they've done is they've added a third performance, usually on the following sea day uh, when people are on the ship. They have one like at one o'clock in the afternoon. And the last two shows we've been to, th that's what we've done. We've gone to the matinee. But even then, you have to show up very, very early to get the seat you want or, you know, to get a good seat or to get the seat you want or to get a seat at all, actually. So the last show we went to was the uh, kind of their big production show called Valora, A Pirate's Quest, I believe. And it was a very elaborate show. Now, it did have some lip sync songs, but most of the most of the musical numbers were actual vocalists on board the ship. Uh, really good vocalists, really good uh, music score. A lot of rock and roll songs you would recognize from the 70s and 80s. And the the show was really, really fun. It was it was very well done. Incredible stage, uh, incredible lighting effects, special effects. And from what I've understood, I watched one of the videos from Don's uh, family vacations, and he would exp had explained in there that this show was created specifically for this ship. So, and it's going away. We saw the actually the last performance that this cast and crew and this show is going to be on Sun Princess. Now that the ship's going to the Caribbean, they're no longer going to have that show. I don't know if the show is going to go to the Star Princess or not, but it was a great show. It was one of the, I'd say one of the best shows we've ever seen on a cruise ship. Very entertaining, incredible costumes, colors, uh, acting, 
and music, just the combination, the dance routines, everything was done extremely well. I, I was going to say if you're on Sun Princess, again, this is one of the things I'm frustrated with is a lot of the things we're reporting on, you're not going to be able to see when you get on board. A lot of the restaurants are changing. Now, the food will probably be the same. The quality of the food, the meals, the menus will probably be the same. But the venues will be different because they're moving things around the ship. We did have dinner one night at the Teppanyaki restaurant, Umai Teppanyaki. And it was good. I think Ricky and I had different take. I think I enjoyed it more than she did. The, you know, the, the question remains, not, you know, is it good? Is it worth $45 per person? I'd say probably is just for the entertainment factor. I think it was a lot of fun. You know, they're cutting up the food. They're, you know, they're singing. It was extremely noisy. It was a very loud venue because you got these two chefs kind of working back to back at two different tables cooking food and they break into song and and, and it gets quite loud and they're banging their utensils on the so if you uh, your Ricky's watch kept going off and warning her that the sound levels could you know damage her hearing so it was it was loud but uh, it was a lot of fun and I thought the food was was reasonably good I don't know that it's the best teppanyaki experience I've ever had and we've had several but uh, I think it was probably worth the $45 per person now it's covered under the premier package that was one of the restaurants that's included the next night which was last night we went back to Umai to have the hot pot now this is very different and, and we had pretty low expectations going in we didn't know what this was going to be like and I it was Things were happening so fast that I actually didn't even get most of it filmed, unfortunately. And it was actually exceeded my expectations. Now, granted, I had low expectations, but the food was, I thought, very good. What they do basically is they bring out two different broths in these and they put it in an induction heater that key, that actually boils the broth and you get noodles you get a variety of meats or seafood or vegetables we got the meat and the vegetables we don't eat much seafood so we skipped that so we got chicken we got pork belly which basically looked just like a bunch of rolled up bacon we got uh, beef little little thin sliced pieces of beef and what you do is you these are all raw you basically put them in the broth and that's what cooks them it's kind of think of it like an asian version of a fondue and then you you ladle the broth out into your bowl and you can have noodles you can put the pieces of meat in there and the broth was exceptional uh Ricky had the miso broth, and I had the lemongrass and kefir lime broth. And they also give you some little sauces that you can put on to make them spicier or to make them sweet, more sweet. Um, and it, it was much, much, much better than I thought it was going to be. It was actually delicious. It was very, very good. Um, so I actually highly recommend that. Now, is it worth $45? I don't know if it's worth $45. But it was very good, and it's very different and very unique. So, I don't know. To me, $90 for two people to have dinner is a lot of money. But um, if you're looking for something different, you don't mind spending the money, and or maybe you've got shipboard credit, or if you have the Premier package, I, I think you should definitely try uh, Umai Hot Pot. And it's not very popular. We, we never saw the tables full. I think there's four, or five, maybe six tables that they serve this at, and the tables can hold up to four people. My only complaint with the hot pot is it was clumsy. It was clunky. You're you're having to reach for ladles and you're having to reach for different pieces of meat and it's hard to reach things. That was the only complaint I have. It, it is is from a technical, you know, getting the because you're, you're basically cooking the food. They're not cooking it for you. You're cooking your own meal in this broth. And it was a little clunky. Another thing is they made sure to tell us that when you're cooking the chicken, because the chicken's raw, you have to cook it for at least five minutes. Well, I got my 
my phone out and I set a timer for five minutes. Actually, I set it for six minutes just to be safe. They should probably provide a timer on the table so that people who don't bring their phone with them or don't have a way of timing it because you wouldn't want to run the risk of eating undercooked chicken. So I'm kind of surprised they don't provide a timer for that. Anyway, but it's still very good. Highly recommend Hot Pot. I think I can recommend the teppanyaki. If you like teppanyaki, I think it's worth a try. So uh, the other observation, food-wise, I'll get to in just a second. I'm going to tell you, I've already told you about our experience at Alfredo's for pizza, and I discovered that it's not the best pizza on the ship, in my opinion, okay? That's just my opinion. And I'm going to tell you about the best pizza on the ship. But before I do, I want to remind you, please, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Click that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and uh, because I'm updating all the time. And we also do a daily blog where I write about our experience with photos and I tell more detail of what we do every day on the ship. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, check out our website, cruisereport.com. Okay, pizza. We... I got a little hungry a couple days ago at lunch. Uh, just a couple days before that, we had had Alfredo, so it was fresh in my mind what it was like. We walk out to the outer deck on Deck 7, where they do have outdoor seating. They call it the promenade area. And I think this was on the port side. Don't hold me to that. I think it was on the port side. And they actually have a slice pizza place out there on the port side. And the guy was pulling them out of the oven, and they're these big, long, Neapolitan-style pizzas. And I said, I'm just going to have a slice of pizza. It ended up being two slices. And hands down, that, that pizza was better than what we had at Alfredo's, in my opinion. I think the crust was better. I think the... The toppings were maybe better, uh, and the toppings were good at Alfredo's, but the crust was a little soggy and a little like it wasn't quite crisp enough. This crust was chewy. It was really good. So, uh, and it's included. You don't have to pay to eat there. It, you just go out port side, and I think there's a slice up on the pool deck on 17. But it's not Neapolitan style. It's more of a New York style pizza, very thin, like you would fold and big, big slices. So uh, check that out. Okay. Other observations, again, just listening to people talk on the ship. One of the complaints we keep hearing is that the bars and the lounges are very small. Uh, it, this is a very different ship, and I think some people, it's going to be a love or hate thing. I think some people are either going to love it, and some people are not going to love it. And... The bars that you're used to on the Royal class ships like the Wheelhouse Bar, uh, Good Spirits Bar, uh, they, they just, they're just they're small. Good, this Good Spirits Bar is tiny and it's kind of shoved back in a corner. I, I couldn't even tell you right now where it was. I, we stumbled onto it one day. And they don't even start serving drinks until like 6 or 6.15 in the evening. It's the only bar, and it's very small. It's the only one I can think of that is really quiet. The Wheelhouse Bar, you get a lot of traffic, people walking back and forth, going to the Horizons dining room. Uh, also, you have a dining room right across from it. I believe right now it's the Reserve dining room. And it gets packed. That wheel, The Wheelhouse Bar is so small, it just gets packed with people. Sometimes you just can't find a place to sit. When you go to something like Crooners, which you may be used to on the other ship, it is situated around the piazza. And the piazza on this ship is an entertainment venue. And it's going, something's going in there all the time, and it's very noisy. So if you just want to go somewhere and have a nice, quiet drink, it's hard to find. It's, it's hard to find. Uh, now, you could go back all the way aft on deck. I believe it's deck eight, and go to the uh, Wake Bar or the Wake. I think it's a Wake View, the Wake View Bar. But you're outside. It's an outdoor bar. So again, if you've sailed on Sun Princess, 
tell me what your thoughts are on this. Am I am I being too critical? And I don't mean to be. I'm not complaining. But I like to think I call balls and strikes. I don't like to think that I'm. Uh, tainting it one way or the other. I don't want to be negative. I just want to let you know this. there are differences in this ship over other princess ships we've been on. It has a whole different feel about it. Uh, another thing I noticed, we'll talk more about the bars in my upcoming review, and that is in the piazza, it's all a marble floor beautiful it's a beautiful area and i sit down in coffee currents in the mornings to have coffee and it's right off of the piazza and it is on the starboard side and i sat there this morning working on my computer and i'm usually there for an hour and a half to two hours doing my blogs doing videos you know getting all my pictures organized and everything and just in the time i was there i saw three people trip and fall. Uh, two people fell. One guy tripped and spilled his coffee. There is a very slight, it's, it's almost impossible to capture on camera. I tried to get a picture of it, and I've stumbled on this same thing a couple of times already. There's a slight bevel up. So when you're walking around the perimeter of the piazza, if you go up to the piazza, there's a very, very slight grade all the way around. It's like it's elevated, maybe maybe just three or four inches. But it, it's sloped, so it's like a, it's like a cone. <laughs> and you can't see it is the problem. There's so many lights, and then the marble is so shiny. When you're just walking around, you don't see this this bevel, I don't know what to call it, a raised area, and your and your shoe, especially if you're wearing tennis shoes or something with a sticky sole, kind of catch on that and you stumble. Well, one gentleman today fell uh, pretty hard. Another gentleman fell in a different area. He tripped on a threshold going from the piazza area over to the, uh, the shops that are on the port side, and he fell hard. In fact, we didn't see it. We just heard it. We heard him fall. Uh, they had to have the medical team come and, and help him, and they were working on him for about 13 or 14 minutes or 15 minutes before they finally took him in a wheelchair down to the medical center. So... There are a few issues <laughs> with this ship, um, and I'll get into more of that in the review. But we're having a good time. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a beautiful ship. It really is. I just think the venues are so small. We, we feel like this ship feels more crowded because all of the venues seem to be smaller than the other ships we've been on. There's more venues, but they're smaller. The theater's smaller. I think the piazza looks smaller to me. Uh, maybe not. I, maybe my memory is not that good, but we're standing in a lot of lines. International Cafe is really poorly designed, in my opinion. Poorly, poorly designed. Nobody knows where to place a drink. You, you do figure it out after a few days. But it's hard to know where you go to place a food order in International Cafe. You have to go to a different place to place a drink order. And it, 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 it can get confusing. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, okay? Because it is a beautiful ship. And I hope that Princess resolves some of these issues. We don't have Deck 19 right now. So maybe that's why the ship feels crowded. Because everybody's more... It, oh, and by the way, I will tell you this definitely. This is a warm weather ship. This is a ship built for the Caribbean. It's not going to ever it's not going to do well if it goes to Alaska because there are so many outdoor areas like at the eatery, you know, probably 35-40% of the seats are outside. So in cold weather, people have to come inside, and the eatery is already packed. There's many times we've gone to the buffet, and there's nowhere to sit. Nowhere. There are no places to sit, because they're all tables for four, and they're all large tables. They're big tables for four, but let me know. Am I crazy? Am I the only one that has experienced this? If you've been on Sun Princess, put your comments in down below. I think it'd be helpful to other people. So anyway, Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to 
click that like button if you like this video, if you find it helpful, and I'll see you on the next cruise update. I'll probably do one more of these before we get off the ship. Uh, we still have dinner scheduled for Love by Brito and the Crown Grill, and we might go back to our favorite restaurant that we've had so far. If I can get us a table, I'm going to see if we can go back a second time. I'll tell you more about that in the next video. Thanks for joining me. Until the next time, smooth sailing.